Look at it! I see. Look at it! Look at it. A while ago, I ordered a very special package. A special edition Black Rock Shooter Figma combined with a Hugh art book. Hugh is one of my favorite artists of all time. Being able to get this art book full of his works was a dream come true. As well as a special edition Black Rock Shooter Figma. Thanks, work bonus. And now I shall open it all for you today. Let's get started. First off, I noticed that the box that it came in wasn't the one advertised on Amazon. But that could mean it was just repackaged to be resold. I did get what I ordered, so that's all I can ask I for. I unboxed the art book first because that was the easiest to pull out. And I got to say, finally having Hugh's art in the palm of my hand is really awesome. Most notable for creating the Steins Gate and Black Rock Shooter series. The book fit way too perfectly into the box, so it took me a minute to get it out. Seriously, the artwork he draws is gorgeous. It's so mesmerizing that I could just stare at it for hours and not get bored. And that's probably what I'm gonna do when Ice Queendom comes out. Because for that surprise Ruby anime, Hugh also did the character designs for that too. So anyways, I just flipped through a couple pages to give an idea of what his artwork looks like. But obviously the main attraction here is what makes this whole deal. 200 plus dollars. The Black Rock Shooter Beast Figma. A Figma made based on artwork from Hugh himself. And that was literally made just for this box set. The box that contained the Figma was still a little hard to get out. As I said before, this box was literally made so that the contents would be super snug in there. As you can see, the Figma has its own custom packaging, which is pretty cool. Now, cracking this bad boy open was surprisingly easy. It just slipped right out with the greatest of ease. And all I needed to do was use scissors to cut a few pieces of tape, and that was it. Everything came in pristine condition and nothing seemed off. All of the parts were nice and snug in their little cubby. And not spilling out all over the place. But even though the figure didn't seem to be cheap, I was still treating it delicately. And basking in its Figma glory. There's also a nice little baggie to contain all of these hands. Which is really helpful because obviously there are a lot of parts. There was also a little pamphlet showcasing all of the parts. Which I mean, I can see all of them right there. It's whatever. I think they're really just for the manufacturers. And the people that package these bad boys up. Now let's open up the main attraction. And and after using more than one brain cell, I realized it was probably better to open it from the back and not the front. Otherwise, I think everything would have spilled out all over the place. This was also super easy to open, it just took a little bit to get the corners unstuck. My suspicions about there being a mess if I open it from the front are confirmed, because most of the parts were only held in place by the back plastic. So definitely a bullet dodge there. Regardless of packaging, the pieces actually came in pretty good condition. I didn't see any painting errors or scratches or whatever. Everything look good. Now for unwrapping the lady from her plasticky domain. Black Rock Shooter Beast looks fantastic. My compliments to the artists and sculptors who helped bring her to life. Just so cool looking. Mwah. Chef's kiss. I think the best part of this figma is the high heeled armored boots. With the amount of detail and craft put into them. Though it's definitely a well designed figma all around. And I do definitely feel like I got my money's worth. Especially when packaged with the art book. However, there was one little thing I thought the package was missing. Its own custom figma stand to make the package worth even more. Oh, well, not really that big of a deal. There was also a teeny weeny little problem that I encountered. And that was the tip of the stand part that was supposed to actually hold the figure up. It did not fit into the hole in the Figma. I tried to make it fit, but the tip was just too big. This is actually a kind of common manufacturing issue, where a plastic mold for a stand is made to fit perfectly to whatever hole or slot the figure is supposed to but go in. But when that happens, the figures or standees can't actually fit on the stands that they were made for. So here's something helpful I learned from my mom when it first happened to me. When you have a plastic stand that won't fit, go and grab a nail file to whittle that bad boy down. And for a standee, you'll need to whittle down the base part of the actual standee. This will take a while, as you need to make sure not to whittle down the plastic too much. Otherwise, you'll have the exact opposite problem of not having the stand or figure fit. And well, I'm not gonna make any of you guys sit through that torture. As the nail filing took a while, I also knocked down my stand three times switch uh yeah. I did file down the stand eventually to where I wanted it to be. But let's get back to finishing unboxing the figure. Let's just play, shall we? Especially since there's so many parts to this Figma. One nifty thing I did learn is that the Figma can actually stand up by itself. All by itself without any of the parts. And this made recording this last section a whole lot easier. Now for the most prominent parts. I have Beast crowned along with an extra pigtail that attaches it to the Figma. Pretty nice accessory wise. One extra faceplate for a more somber look and a whole lot of hands. The most amount 
of hands I've ever seen for a single Figma ever. And then a giant sword that is literally bigger than the Figma itself, if only by a smidge. And nicely crafted, if I must say. Sleek and firmly designed. As I can tell when I'm spinning it around repeatedly. And the last parts are a futuristic gun. Which you all can see right here. Nothing more to say on that front. And an extra hair piece to have her iconic flaming eye. Next step is me just playing around with it a little bit. Assembling some of the accessories on Black Rock Shooter Beast. I first tried inserting the pigtail so that the crown would be up on her head. Difficulties arose to say the least. I figured out a little bit later that the pigtail goes in at a very specific angle. It was a little difficult to figure out what that angle was, but I figured it out eventually. <laughs> Finally, I did get the pigtail on in a satisfactory manner. And the beast had her crown. I then wanted to put on her hairpiece so she would have her flaming eye. But I realized I forgot to use more than one brain cell. I actually had to put the hairpiece on before the crown, otherwise it would not fit. So I did just that, having to struggle all over again. At least the hair pieces were easy to remove and put on. And so I figured out to remove the basic hair piece, that is. They're actually really well crafted and designed, having the detail of what you'd expect from an anime character's hair. And finally, after struggling for a few minutes, I managed to pry the thing off. And attach her flaming eye piece to she her. She does this a lot in the media she's present in, so it's a good callback. I kind of see it as like an ultra instinct mode for her. That only she can do. It is definitely a nice touch on this figma. Also, I should mention that Black Rock Shooter Dawnfall is currently airing right now. It's about Black Rock Shooter Emperors awaking in a world where machines have taken over and humanity is on the brink of extinction. It does look kind of interesting to me, so I think I'll watch it once it finishes airing. But fair warning, Black Rock Shooter is a franchise where the story is something different each time. So some things might not be up your alley. As for me, the TV anime is where it's at right now. Now back to the regularly scheduled program. The sword and the gun were surprisingly easy to put on the hands, which was a refreshing change of pace for me struggling to pry off all the parts. But, well, it's probably just because I have almost zero upper body strength. Well, at least the Figma looks super awesome. With her crown, her flaming eye, and her big giant sword. In conclusion, was this $200 art book and Figma box set worth it? For me, yes. I got an art book from one of my favorite overseas artists. And a cool Figma fashioned after one of his artworks. I know I'm definitely repeating myself, but I really like this set. I'm definitely going to have a lot of fun playing with this Figma. And thus, Bright Kitty is signing out. With a new toy to play with and a new art book to gawk at.